Well, he certainly um, has a lot of uh, tools, arrows in his quiver. He has patience that the ambassador mentioned. Uh, he also has the state control of his media. Uh, and he has, um, frankly, a government where he does not need to run for re-election. And as a result of that, you know, he has um, time in, in many respects uh, on his side, Tyler. And also, if he tells the central bank, the Bank of China, to do something, they're going to do it. Oh, make, make no mistake, the PBOC is um, uh, reacting and responding uh, based on direction from senior, senior uh, officials, uh, including President Xi. Meredith, have, the, have currencies now become weaponized? Not to the extent that investors are, are speculating. And actually, China has been manipulating its currency, but to prop it up. In yes. hopes that a trade deal could actually be <laughs> be secured this year. So I think the real story here is the loss of confidence in Beijing that they're going to get any kind of trade deal with President Trump that Beijing could live with. So what they have effectively done then, Meredith, to play it out so that I understand it, is they have backed away from supporting and artificially holding the currency stronger than it would otherwise be and have now let it decline to below seven. Let it decline to below seven in a, a carefully managed way. Let's be clear, this is Beijing here. Uh, but tongue in cheek, we've had Chinese analysts overnight commenting that having this new psychological threshold be broken shows that the yuan is really a more market reflective currency than what it had been previously. Uh, so the key here, and even the Xinhua uh, State News Agency is calling this, this breaking point uh, the throwing off of shackles that eventually would have needed to be broken as well. So China, let's be clear, China is not interested in a free fall of its currency at all. But what they are saying is that they're allowing the renminbi to reflect the real um, market pressures, the external headwinds uh, that this trade confrontation has brought to bear. And, Steph, uh, Stefan, it's interesting to me that, you know, this is all perceived as a blow to the U.S., this currency move, when in reality, as Larry Lindsay kind of described, it's a blow to the Chinese. Well, I mean, it offsets the impact to the U.S. consumer of any kind of tariff. It means they have less purchasing power on the world stage. I mean, it, how is this somehow winning against us, other than the, knowing that it's going to make the president unhappy? Right. Well, it not only blunts, to your point, the impact of the tariffs, but it also has real long-term costs for China, and not just around potential capital flight. They, their corporations have huge dollar-denominated debt that just became more expensive. They, they purchase a lot of commodities like oil, which are dollar denominated. So as a result of that, all of those purchases now for China just became more expensive. But to Meredith's point, let's not overreact to the devaluation. I think it is more symbolic still at this point than it is actually going to have a profound economic and financial impact. But what I think it does mean is China is now preparing for a longer battle as opposed to having some near-term resolution and some long-term sustainable outcome uh, uh, in our trade dispute. It just seems interesting to me they're choosing a way that, while it's headline-grabbing, may be shooting themselves in the foot when they could do other things like just say, don't buy Starbucks. I mean, if they really wanted to hurt the U.S., right? Well, and I presume a lot of those, I mean, you see even with the reports on how now Chinese are supporting Huawei. Huawei. You know, there, there's a real sense of patriotic duty uh, in China to support their companies and their economy. And so as a result of that, I do think, you know, we, we should gird for a longer battle than uh, the market might have expected in the not too um, recent past. And we that's what you're pricing that all now in. And, and you're <laughs> seeing that already here. in trade flows. So the Commerce Department just came out with, in the first six months of this year, trade with China is now down 14 percent. And that is both our exports and our imports, as businesses are now saying this is going to be too volatile, too uncertain, and we're going to decouple our supply chain with China. And that's going to have impacts to prices in the U.S. for consumers. But fundamentally, it's going to obviously cost the Chinese economy, and it's going to lead to uh, lower Chinese employment, which is the one thing that obviously their government is primarily focused on. So